Hey cruisers, and welcome back. We are tonight going to pack together the ultimate shore day bag. I just saw a comment from Ann Green in the chat and Ann said, I think the ultimate shore day bag needs to be good for a beach day and a trip to a museum that doesn't allow backpacks. Well, tonight we're kind of focusing more on a warm weather beach day type bag, but we can certainly modify Anne as we need. And we're also gonna share some tips for modifying for cooler weather destinations like Alaska. So let's get right to it. For those of you who are wondering, um, I've mentioned that we had a checklist for this. This checklist lives in our master class. If you'd like to see all of this written down in paper, you can check out the link in the description and enroll in the master class. We have tons of checklists, but fear not. If you don't wanna do that, we are going to go through the entire process and every single item on the list tonight, but this is there as a resource for you if you want it. I'm actually going to be using it for reference. So tonight we are going to start with a nice lightweight packable backpack. I'm actually using one from Neat Pack. This is one of the newest ones that I have in my closet um, tonight. So we're going to actually pack this sucker as we go, but I think these packable lightweight backpacks are fantastic. And all you have to do is pull them out of their little housing, zip the little pouch shut, and then you can get started. Now, as an alternative, if you don't wanna pack a bag this big, which oftentimes is not necessary at all, maybe you don't need that much space, maybe you're not gonna be going to a beach, you don't need a towel or a swimsuit, you could take a smaller bag. This is one of my favorites. I got it at TJ Maxx a few years ago. It's just a shoulder bag. Or you could go ultra light, and you could even take a waist pack. Now, if I were going to Rome for the day, I would probably take this and a carabiner with a water bottle on my belt and nothing else. So there are lots of options and this list is just to give you guys ideas. It is not meant to be the perfect list. In fact, we're going to encourage you a little bit later on to tell us what we're missing or what you would pack that we did not pack. Wanted to let you guys know too, tonight we do have a giveaway. Our friends at Lounge Lids are actually going to be giving two of these beautiful towel holders. These go on the back of your lounge chair or your, your chair, whatever you're sitting by the pool with. Hold your towel in place. They're gonna be allowing you to customize two lounge lids. Now these are, this is US only for now, but hopefully they'll open up to international shipping a little bit later. So stay tuned, excuse me, until the end and we'll talk a little bit more about how to enter that giveaway. How's everybody doing in the chat, Mr. Cruise Tips TV? Good? Okay, sounds great. Well, let's get started and get on this right away. One of the first things that we recommend that you pack in your backpack is the port guide that your cruise line provides to you. This is one from Alaska. Um, this is a port guide for Juno, and as you can see, it has some statistics in it. It has all kinds of best of spots to visit. It talks about shopping. It talks about the all aboard time, and there is even a map of the downtown area on the back. This is a great thing to take. In addition, you might want to consider taking your daily newsletter with you as well. In case the all aboard time and information is not on the port guide, that information will be here as well as most likely the ship's telephone number if something were to go wrong. I don't don't actually see that here but it's probably on the other document but it has the weather on it and some highlights of the port so these two documents might be a good thing to put in your bag unless you're super duper familiar with the port and you don't need it which a lot of these things you won't need um, I think we should be really clear about that this is by no means meant to be a pack everything list this is just giving you food for thought angel thank you for the super chat so that's one of the first things I think you should pack I also have become very fond of these little waste packs I was born in the 70s and we call these fanny packs and where I come from, these make you a serious nerd. I mean, like a major nerd. However, as a mom and someone maybe traveling to a somewhat, not dangerous port, but a place where maybe I don't want everything hanging off my body, a little waste pack like this can be really handy for smaller items. So this could be interchanged for a lot of the other things that we're showing today. And I think it's something that I'm gonna try to put in our shop. This is my Tagalongs brand, and I honestly don't even know where I got this. I think that maybe, just maybe, I got this as an upgrade in my FabFitFun box, but I'm a fan of these, and you can hide them under your shirt so nobody sees your nerdiness, folks. So, anyhow. Okay, let's move on to the small items that I normally like to pack, and then we will actually pack them. Instead of taking my entire wallet ashore, which I never, ever do, this stays in the safe on my entire cruise, I like to take a small pouch that looks a lot like this one. This can be found in our store, or sometimes even just a Ziploc bag. 
Inside of that, I put all of the teeny tiny things that I need for the day. I like these clear pouches because they are see-through and so not likely to have a hard time finding something in a pinch. So let me tell you exactly what's gonna go in here. I am going to take a wristwatch. This might be on my wrist, it may not. This is going to ensure that no matter what my cell phone decides to do for the day or my Apple Watch, that I know what ship time is. So a wristwatch, analog, not digital, preferably. I love that. A little bit of pain reliever is always nice. Never know why you might need it, but hopefully you won't. A cell phone charger, so a little battery type thing for your cell phone. I did not bring my cable out, so I know the cable's missing. You also need the cable. Cash, a Band-Aid or two, my cruise card, some chapstick, and we'll talk about the sunscreen later. We'll put that aside. And then most definitely some Santa hands. You guys know I love these. These are how we keep our hands clean when we don't have access to a sink. I think they're the best. So all that little stuff is gonna go in here. Did I miss anything? Credit card. I did not put my credit card in here because I don't feel like taking it out of my wallet, but this is definitely a very, very small amount of my valuables and really tiny things to keep track of. I can grab this and run to the restroom and leave my beach bag sitting there if there's nothing really valuable in it. So that's why we keep this really, really small. If you don't have something like this, a Ziploc bag works great. In fact, I always take Ziploc bags ashore. You never know what you're gonna need them for. Snacks, putting stuff in that's wet, keeping things dry if you get on a boat that has a lot of spray and you don't wanna get something wet, put it in the Ziploc bag and throw it in the backpack and you'll be safe. This is essential, this goes with me everywhere. All right, oh, I told you I was gonna pack things, so let's do it, let's pack them. I'm actually gonna put the Ziploc bag in here. So this is something, because it has my valuables in it, I wanna say that I would not put this in the outer pouch of my backpack. I would wanna put it probably in the bottom where no pickpockets could get it, so that's gonna go in there. Next up, when we're looking at smaller items, definitely sunscreen is one thing that you wanna pack. You can put that anywhere. So this might go in one of the little outer pouches out here. And then other items that I would have, definitely my phone. Phone probably is gonna be in my hand, but we'll put it right here just for convenience purposes. Another thing that I always pack in my shore day bag is a carabiner or two or five. These things are the best things ever. Here's a couple of examples of how you could use a carabiner. See this water bottle right here? You definitely wanna take a water bottle ashore with you. It doesn't have to be a giant one like this, but keep in mind that you can get dehydrated on a hot port day. Go to the buffet, fill the sucker up with ice water, and then take a carabiner and hook this on the outside of your backpack. It might bump you in the leg while you're walking, which is kind of annoying. Sorry, I can't get it on there, but there we go. And then you can just hook it on the bottom of the backpack, or better yet, to a little spot like this right here. So it's not gonna, the condensation's not gonna get all over everything. Another thing that carabiners are excellent for you guys is hooking your hats to the outside of your backpack, just like that. So this is actually my son's current hat, and this is something I would very likely do. Usually I have lots of things dangling off my backpack. I look like a bag lady, and I don't care. Really, honestly, I just don't care. So those are some of the smaller items. Usually I walk off the ship with my cruise card hanging over my neck in something like this. You want to do that because you have to scan yourself off the ship, right? You have to enter your cruise card into the little thing just to get off the ship. And so, yeah, anyway, that's gonna be around my neck. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stow that away. We're gonna assume that we're in the taxi cab now. We don't need this anymore. And this is gonna go in the pouch, right? This is definitely true to life. This is exactly what I'd be doing. All right, so assuming we're in a warm weather port, because remember, what we're showing you today is for a warm weather port. We're gonna do an Alaska modification in a few minutes here. Assuming you're in a warm weather port, you may also want to consider taking some kind of a waterproof thing to put around your neck if you decide to go in the water to hold your valuables. If you don't take a lot of valuables, you don't have to have a lot of space for them. These items, this waterproof um, phone bag, this little neck wallet, or this dryo pack right here, all of these things could hold all of my valuables, my cash, my credit cards, my cruise card, my driver's license, whatever it is that I'm taking, right? Don't forget your photo ID. That's one thing I didn't mention. All of these could go around my neck with me and I could leave my backpack probably safely on a lounge chair somewhere. Most of the places that we go, that is exactly what we do. Sometimes we leave one adult sitting there the whole time and we don't all go in the water, but just know that if you keep your bag really light, the chances are good that you can probably do that. So 
One thing that I get a little bit nervous about leaving at the, uh, you know, at the, I guess you could say at the shore, if I'm going in the water or leaving behind would be my sunglasses. But usually if you think about it, if you step away, you're probably wearing them. So again, sunglasses, don't forget to pack them for the whole family. For the purposes of this live stream, I just have my sunglasses and they're going in one of the outer pouches. So as you can see, there's a hundred million percent space still in this backpack. I've hardly filled it at all. So we will pop these papers in there because they were the first thing I mentioned. So I'm gonna put those in kind of the flat area in the back of the backpack so that they can stay somewhat flat. And then next up, I'm gonna show you what I keep in my wet swimsuit bag. You hear me talking about Wander wet bags all the time. This is a Wander wet bag. This is a wet swimsuit bag. You're gonna see something funny and that is that our GoPro is in it. My husband always slips his GoPro into the dry bag at the beginning of the trip. So what else I have in here is my bikini and my rash guard. I, if I were on an actual cruise, I'd also have my son's swimwear in here and maybe a pair of his goggles. But what we like to do while this stuff is still dry, we like to also put our GoPro and bobber, which by the way, other than our cell phone, if we're going for a beach day, this is the only camera we take because we wanna keep it light and go in the water and leave our stuff behind without having to worry about it. So if this is in my hand and my cell phone is in my hand, I don't have to worry. So anyway, this goes in here before our swimsuit gets wet, but not after, of course. And then this whole wet swimsuit bag, now that the GoPro's kind of, you know, insulated, this all goes inside the backpack. Next up, you're going to have beach towels that are provided to you by the cruise line. This is obviously not a cruise line beach towel. It's way too pretty. It's actually from Natasha's 31 store but um, this is just an example of space that you would need to allow for. One beach towel can sometimes be enough for a party of two or three. You may not need to take a bunch of towels with you. Usually we take two, but for tonight, I'm just gonna put in one. So this sucker is going in. All right, next up, I would probably put my own hat in. If I were packing swimsuits for the whole family, I would take a larger wet swimsuit bag, something like this. This is the Lux laundry size, and this would even hold wet towels on the way back. So this is something that I take with me on just about every tropical shore day experience. I also usually take some type of a towel tamer like this, and what else am I forgetting? Oh, yes. If it's a tender port, you might find me with my wristbands. These are called C bands. This is a maybe. If we're walking off of the ship and not tendering, I probably don't need these. So I'm not actually gonna put these in the bag. I just wanted to bring them out tonight for kind of demonstration purposes. I'm looking around to see if there's anything I forgot. I forgot to put one of these in the bag, so I'll put that in the outer pocket because it's not that valuable. We'll strap the hat to the outside. We will strap the water bottle to the same hook here. And my friends, we are ready to go ashore. And this puppy's not even full. So as you can see, that is not too bad. And you can just fling it over your back. Is it usually this lightweight? Probably not. Usually we fill it up a little bit more, but I'm also packing for three people. But this is about what a normal shore day bag looks like for us. Now I wanna tell you a little bit about things that I have on our ultimate shore day bag checklist, but that are not in this bag today. So I'm gonna give you some extra items that you could pack, but that I didn't pack today for a warmer weather one. One thing you probably didn't see, we already mentioned that you didn't see the credit cards and you didn't see the cable for a cell phone charger, right? Those I forgot, so that's just an oversight. Extra batteries and memory for your camera. Really good idea to put those in a Ziploc bag or in your wallet or just wherever they don't come in contact with water. We've had that happen before where they've come in contact with salt water and salt water and batteries obviously do not mix. So that's something you might wanna do. You also wanna make sure you print off your excursion confirmations. I did not mention them tonight because I don't have any printed off right now, but your excursion confirmations should be one of the first things that you get into that shore day bag. A few other things that I didn't pack were a cover up for the beach, I didn't pack a hairbrush. If you're going to the beach and you are fussy about your hair, you might need a hairbrush. I don't usually do that. You might need bug spray if you're going somewhere tropical. If you're snorkeling, you might need a snorkel and mask. And if you're going to a beach that's really rocky or has a reef, or if you're going somewhere with really hot pavement, you might wanna consider water shoes. Again, we didn't pack those because we normally don't. 
Another thing that's great is baby powder to remove um, sand off of your feet at the end of a short day. I didn't pack it today, but we often do take baby powder so that before we put our flip-flop sandals back on, we can get all of the sand off of our feet. Other than that, the only other things I didn't mention would be things if you're traveling with children. So you might want to take snacks. Goggles for kids are better than snorkels and masks in the ocean and pools because they don't interfere with their breathing. My son still loves goggles. He prefers them over snorkels and masks and we take them everywhere. If you're traveling with really little ones or babies, you might need swim diapers. And of course, a change of clothes, just depending on what you're doing. Now let's talk about um, modifying this backpack or this shore day bag for a port like Alaska. A lot of the things are going to change. You're obviously going to omit the beach towel and the swimsuits and things like that, right? You're not going to need them. But all of those little supplies might remain the same. I find in Alaska sometimes I do pack my entire wallet. I might actually do that instead because I might be apt to do a little bit more shopping. I might need more credit cards. So that might be something I would change. Other things you might put in your backpack for Alaska or a cool weather destination will be a sweater, a rain jacket, because remember in Alaska it's all about layers and you may end up wearing a t-shirt half the day and need a fleece and a rain layer in the second half of the day. Um, bug spray again, if you're going on an active excursion where there's maybe bears and lots of mosquitoes, believe me, I got eaten alive in Ketchikan last year because I didn't follow my own advice and take bug spray and I had a giant mosquito bite on my neck which look gorgeous in the vlogs, just absolutely fabulous. You might take a small umbrella, although honestly most people don't. They pack a, a rain layer and they wear baseball hats and they tend not to wear uh, use umbrellas in Alaska, which is very interesting. You might take a poncho, which I don't like them, but some people do. You might take a wrap or a shawl. You might take binoculars. You might even take some spare socks for an active excursion. So that is how you would modify this list for Alaska. And that, my friends, is all I have to say about the Ultimate Shore Day Bag. I hope you have enjoyed it. Yes, to whomever's asking if we will link that backpack, yes, but it's they already exist in our store, which is amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash cruise tips TV. I highly recommend the Oryxin uh, packable water resistant backpack. It is not waterproof, but it is water resistant. So that is something I think that you should consider. We love them. I got out the neat pack tonight because it's brand new and it, it hasn't been beaten up as much, so I thought it would be nice to show you guys, but that's what I would recommend. Turtle Frog said, do kids need photo ID to get on and off the ship in port? It depends on the port. Most of the time, they absolutely do not. If you're in Nassau, they do. Everyone needs photo ID. If you are crossing um, into another country, like for example, if you're in Alaska and you're going um, you know, into Canada, you need a passport. Usually they don't. When in doubt, ask the front desk. Um, Janimal says, is there a way to find out which nights will be formal before you sail? Yes, you want to try to find the newsletters from your sailing, so Google it. So if you're going on Diamond Princess on January 19th, you Google Diamond Princess January 19th, Princess Patter. You try to find the newsletters and then you read through and see. A lot of times if it's a seven night cruise, it's day two and five, but that's really not a science. Cindy, what is a rash guard? Cindy, a rash guard is um, something that surfers kind of became popular with surfers. And it is actually kind of a sun protective item. I'm gonna show you what it is that you can wear if you're really fair skinned or if you're gonna be in the sun for a long period of time in the water. A rash guard can be worn any member of the family, short sleeve, long sleeve, and it looks like this. So it's basically like a swimsuit for your upper half. We love them because I'm real fair and I burn and I really wanna to try to protect my son's skin. He doesn't burn easily, but I put him in rash guards often so that he doesn't burn. And I also don't have to reapply sunscreen to his, his middle section quite as often if I have him in a rash guard and he hates it when I put sunscreen on him. So that is a rash guard. Um, Gail wants suggestions for a portable battery pack for an iPhone 6S. How about we, do we have some in our shop or can we add some? I don't think we do, but you know, honestly, uh, we've we got some fancy ones in the past, some bigger, high-powered ones, mm -hmm. but they always end up staying home because the cheapos that we bought for like I don't know, what was it, eleven dollars at Costco? They, you know, for yeah. eleven dollars for two, they're so much more convenient and, and easy. So I wouldn't put a lot of thought into it. Just find a good cheap deal. Find a good cheap one on Amazon, or wherever, or Costco. Or Costco. Great, I like it. Okay, Gail, there's your answer. John B., can you bring a copy or an image of your passport? No. It might be nice to have for peace of mind, but it doesn't do you any good, unfortunately. 
Okay, um, MG Toe, this is not a blouse, it's actually a dress. I'll back up and show it to you. Um, I got it at Target last year, and I really love it. I wore it on our Mexican Riviera cruise, but thank you for the compliment. Um, no Crystal Queen, you will not have issues bringing your daughter's medication on and off the ship if it's in its original bottle. They're very accustomed to medication. Please don't worry. Um, Jamie B. Flying, is there a reason you don't talk about adding a passport card to a cruiser's ID stash? Jamie, we usually just recommend a full passport. I'm not quite sure I understand the question, but um, that's, that's a good question, but usually that's why. Okay. Uh, Jim, you think rash guards are sausage casings? Do they make you feel like that when you wear them? I mean, you might need, size up, Jim. You're squishing yourself into your rash guard. <laughs> So cute. I love it. Yeah, Wendy, I buy a lot of clothes at Target. I find it's really hit and miss on quality, and sizing is very difficult for me at Target because it's not consistent from one brand to the next, but who needs to pay more, right? I get a lot of the tops and dresses that I wear here on the channel and on cruises at Target. I just find that they, they have some fun things, and they change so frequently. It's really nice. Okay, Amy said they used rash guards in their last cruise based on the tips, loved them. You were not miserably burned for once. Yeah, and you know what, Amy? They're kind of becoming fashionable. I love that. I don't feel weird or out of place. I also don't feel like all my body's hanging out all over the place. I just, I'm not, I'm not worried about modesty or anything. I just kind of like the way they look. I think they're kind of fun. My husband doesn't usually wear one. Um, he's got nice guns, so he shows off the guns a little bit, but he has one. He also just doesn't burn that easily, so he doesn't usually wear one, but he's a guy. You know how it goes. Anyway, all right. I know, Jada, I wish the Target in Australia was as good, too, and I wish we could send you everything. It's so frustrating. Okay, let's get some more questions up because we definitely have time. I want to tell everybody how to went to enter the giveaway soon, but I also would like to spend some time answering questions first. Um, actually, what I'd like to have everyone do in order to enter the giveaway tonight, um, I'd like you to, let's go ahead and do it, but what I'd like you to do, we're entering, by the way, United States only, please, tonight, guys. Got some international stuff coming soon, though, don't worry to enter to win two lounge lids tonight, tell me what the most important thing you pack in your shore day bag is. If you've never been on a cruise, that's okay. Just tell me the one thing, the most important thing you could possibly put in your shore day bag in the chat. Please only note it if you're United States because um, you know I'm trusting you guys and then we'll select a winner a little bit later on. Diane said, show us your guns, Mr. Cruise Tips TV. <laughs> Diane, if you follow our Instagram page, um, his guns are on there. He, he does come out of hiding sometimes. He's, he's a hottie. Go check it out. Go to my Instagram page. Follow me over there. We post him on Facebook too. I promise you. And he's in the vlogs. He really is. Just not all that often. He's just not the on-camera personality. Ooh, look at all the sunscreens. Sunblock, 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 sunscreen. Oh my gosh, you guys. That's great. Good thing I showed you my sunscreen tonight or I would have been looking bad, huh? <laughs> oh, Elisa Marie says, I've got to know where you got that cruise statue in the background. Elisa Marie, we get asked all the time, and you know what's hilarious? It's a piggy bank. I got it on a princess cruise. I should buy some of these when I'm on a princess cruise where I'm not limited on space coming home, but aren't they so cute? It's a piggy bank. We don't use it. We just display it. But I think it's so funny. I wonder how much this thing costs. I wonder if I still have the price tag on it. Nope, but there it is. Good old piggy bank. You unscrew it from the bottom, put the coins right in there. I know, I think it's really cute too. Um, this one is actually, this is a carnival ship and it, and it honks. Wait, oh, the battery's dead. Oh, do you hear that? I'm put it by my microphone. It doesn't sound good, guys. It sounds like I had refried beans for lunch. <laughs> Sorry, that was gross. Why did I say that? Anyway. Keeping it real at Cruise Tips TV. So this one rolls. This is like a little, I don't know, it has, it has wheels on it. It's a kid's toy, obviously. We don't collect much of that stuff but um, because we don't like clutter, but they are fun and cute. I love it. Okay, um, yes, Mojo, if you're going on a scuba excursion, there are almost always places to um, store your bag. Joe Ellen, you have a passport and a passport card. That's a great idea. Um, Melody, is the rash guard supposed to be tight against your skin or loose? Melody, it should be a combination of both. It should be whatever you feel comfortable with in that covers your skin or protects you from the sun. I wear mine pretty tight, but not like, like Jim said, not sausage tight. 
but like snug. Um, but I think if you'd like it to be more loose, that's okay. Just know that if you get in the water, you know how when you get in the water, if you're wearing something loose, it can make you somewhat uncomfortable? That's what I would caution you against, okay? All right. I wanna see if I miss any questions. I'm scrolling up, guys. I know we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do that. Mm-hmm. Sassafras says everybody in Florida wears rash guards because skin cancer sucks. Yes. Um, okay, Hooch. Um, Jersey Girl. Yes. Um, no, honey, just one. Just one. Okay. Hooch. Yes. Some people do add a global plan to their cell phone when they cruise, but most of the time it's not necessary. I personally don't because usually to me the expense of doing that is more expensive than buying a Wi-Fi package on board and usually I can also find some free Wi-Fi in port if I'm trying hard enough so I don't generally need to but it can be done. I'm considering it for Asia honestly so yeah. Okay you guys have one more minute to enter for the giveaway and then we're going to be picking. All right let's see here. Good questions coming in tonight, and I love that a lot of them are um, topical. Mellow Bulldog wants to know, do you get hot in the rash guard? I only wear it when I go in the water for the most part, so you should be okay. I don't just sit around in it, Mellow Bulldog. That is such a good question. I would take it off as soon as I got out of the water. I would roll it in a towel to get the excess um, water off of it, but I really like that. And I love that, um, who's calling it a rashy? Do you guys in Australia, is it Australia that you call them rashies? Everybody calls them rashies. I think that is so cute. I'm sorry, I'm gonna say it's cute because I love it, I think it's so cute. Yes, Christy, melanoma survivor, bring your sunscreen. Yes, your sunscreen and cover your skin. Skin cancer runs in my family, so I am with you 100% on that. Um, I, my brothers, I have three brothers, for those of you who don't know, three brothers, no sisters. Um, one of my brothers has had skin cancer removed from all over himself. Um, my family is in construction though, so they're outside and they're in the sun a lot. So I don't have that kind of lifestyle. I have an office job, so I tend not to be in the sun as much, but still I'm very scared. Maureen, I absolutely do not wear water shoes on the ship anywhere, let alone the pool. Don't do it. I don't think it's necessary. I really don't. Okay, good job on the entries, you guys. Excellent job. Margaret, to enter the giveaway, type the one thing, the most important thing you take in your shore bag, but you must be from the US. Go ahead and go, we still have time. Um, okay, Zachary said, tips on keeping your shore bag secure. Zachary, my best tip on keeping it secure is to pack very minimal stuff and take the valuables with you when you step away from your bag. I, I'm not a big fan of locking it to the, to the chair or um, you know things like that, although we will be showing you a product next week where you could put everything in a vault and you could use a vault, but I feel like those the vaults draw attention to themselves. It's just something that really bothers me. So to me, I like to take a minimalist approach, put everything in something like this, take it with me around my neck and keep it secure um, and just not pack a lot of valuables. So, oh, you do, Turtle Frog. You call them rashies too in New Zealand. I love that. Okay, let's see what other questions we have. Now is a good time, everyone, to, to please retype your questions if I have missed them. We're gonna go ahead and we are going to pick a winner soon. Mr. Crucips TV is still going through all the entries, so please give us just a moment. Oh, we do have a winner. Oh, okay, our winner tonight is Emily S. And I believe Emily might be a student in our master class because I think I've seen her in the private Facebook page. Congratulations, Emily. Please email me your physical address at sherry, S H E R I, at cruise tips tv.com. S H E R I, at cruise tips tv.com. Don't leave it in the chat for security reasons. Congratulations. We will have lounge lids get in touch with you and you get to design your own custom lounge lids. You guys, they're really reasonable too. If anybody's looking into them, they're, the prices on them are fantastic. It's just loungelids.com and it's in the description box. Okay, okay, Midge said, what about an RFID pouch for your credit card? It's a great idea, Midge. When we're traveling somewhere um, that's a little more sketchy, we definitely focus more on RFID protection. I do have an RFID wallet from Travelon and an RFID purse from Travelon that I really, really love. So, okay, let's see. Mr. Cruise Tips TV wanted me to just say a big thank you 
to everybody who's helping out in the chat tonight with answering questions. That is one of the best things about Cruise Tips TV, you guys, is it is not about us. It's about the community. It's about you guys. It's about this amazing group of people who selflessly come into the chat and help out. And those of you who have given us a thumbs up already, I just want to say thank you so much because it is such a wonderful gift to have all of you who are helping out to come back and help out the newbies. And you know that we can't always keep up with it. So I really want to thank you. Okay, Brittany, don't worry. I'll help you find the private Facebook page. It's really, really easy. It's actually a group. Brittany, go to our Facebook page, Cruise Tips TV. On the side, there's a little menu that says like about, home. It, you'll see a thing that says groups. Just click on groups. It's the only group we have. Request to join and me or Natasha will accept you right away, okay? No problem. Jill, don't take your beach towel on the cruise. They will be provided for you. Leave your beach towels at home, okay? Oh my gosh, Shelly Ellis said, my husband wants to know if it's okay to bring mustard to the mustard drill. Shelly, have you seen our mustard drill video where my husband tosses me a thing of mustard? You must have, I think that's so cute. So yeah, tell him he can take all the condiments in the world. I love, Judy, your tip. Don't forget to put sunblock on your head wherever the air, um, where hair parts and when in the water and not wearing a hat. So true, you guys, sun protection is so critical. Um, Tracy wants to know, how many compartments does the Neat Pack have? Really good question, Tracy. I'd be happy to show you. Okay, the Neat Pack has, it has one outer pocket here, okay? So standard, right? And then it has the two side mesh pockets that you can probably see, hopefully you can see. Let me just hold it up. Two side mesh pockets. Now, when you open the compartment, you have one large inner area, but you do have this area that's sort of separated off for a laptop or paperwork. And then this is the secret compartment. This is where my husband always puts his memory cards. And we sometimes we put our valuables in here. This is where the backpack stores into itself when you go ahead and, and um, when you, I don't even know what the word is. When you put it back into its little pouch like a kangaroo, this is where it goes, but this is a really great little secure inner area. And this is like my husband's secret pouch. He claims that every time, right, sweetie? You do. So that's it. That's all that's in there, Tracy. Um, the back is just a nice breathable mesh, which I think is really comfortable. Okay, let's get some more questions. We have time, we have time. Alan said, what level of sunscreen do you use in the US and Mexico and Caribbean? Um, I use Neutrogena Wet Skin Kids and it's a 75, although I've heard that nothing over a 35 actually works, but um, that's what we do. Okay, Millie said, how do I start a roll call on Facebook for a sailing? So Millie, you would, you would have to have your own Facebook page and then you would want to start a group. So you would go to your, your Facebook page and you would add a group, I believe. If you guys, if I'm saying this wrong, please help me out here because I'm not an expert on that. And then you would title it the name of the ship and the date of the sailing. So you would, t you would title it something like um, Norwegian Bliss November 11th, 2018 Roll Call, okay? Um, special thanks to Diane for the super chat. Thank you, Diane, appreciate it. I'm gonna jump in and get some more questions answered. Okay. Um, oh, Zachary, I'm not cooking anything for dinner. You're cooking pineapple teriyaki pork and rice. Can I have some? I'm starving. I don't know what we're going to do for dinner, Zachary. We don't have any food in the house, and I don't know. I just don't know. That's my sad face. Friday night, I should have food in the house. Last night, we went out to dinner after the live stream. We went and got pizza. We were just too tired, but um, it was fun. It's always fun to go out to dinner, you know, cheap dinner, and just talk and, like, you know, debrief from the day. Lots of good sunscreen tips today. Yi Chang recommends mineral only sunscreen if you're gonna be in the ocean. Save the corals. Yes, Yi Chang, mineral only sunscreen. You have to watch for that in, in certain ports in Mexico too, guys, like Cozumel, Cancun. If you're going to places like Shell Ha or Eshkaret, they only want you wearing biodegradable sunscreen, so please be aware of that. Okay, some good ones, some good ones. Let's get some more questions. Yeah, Ella. You're gonna like that Oryx and backpack, Ella. It's great. Um, we've had a couple of them and I really do like them. Um, 59 Sherry, <laughs> you're so cute. You can click the super chat button if you wanna donate, but please don't ever feel obligated. You don't have to do that. Just being here is awesome. You can shop our Amazon store if you wanna help us out. That's also super duper helpful to us. It really helps us to keep our, um, our camera equipment up to date and to buy little supplies like batteries and microphones and things that wear out. So thank you so much for that. 
Uh, and thumbs ups are free. We like those. Thank you. Um, Brittany says, does Mr. Cruz Tips TV bring his professional camera to shore excursions? You want to get good pics? You have a GoPro, but wonder if you should take a nice camera. Brittany, it depends on the shore excursion. If it's beach, sand, or salt water, he does not. We would very rarely expose our $1,000 or $2,000 or $3,000 cameras to salt water because that is just really dangerous. We are big GoPro people. And Mama uses the iPhone for everything. Oh, I man. cannot tell you how good it is. You don't even need me anymore. I, I put that question in there, and I was waiting. I you know, had my finger on the button. I was gonna talk. And it's like, nah, she answered it perfectly. You were gonna answer so I'm just it? gonna go. I'm just gonna go outside and yeah. You, I want to say something. Okay, no, you do not, sweetie. Don't say that. Come on, you guys. You know how I keep saying I I'm not a big fan of the neat pack. I just open this and look. There's a hole in it, so pl I'm not going to recommend this backpack. Please stick with the Oryx, and I'm sorry, but that is, this is brand new. There's a hole in it. So anyway, I just want to get that out there. I'm sorry that I showed you a product that is not high quality, but um, now you know why we use the Oryx. In. Um, Melanie, do I carry copies, do I carry my ID copies around the neck in the pouch while I'm in the water on the beach? Probably not. If I really had some valuables, it might be my credit card and some cash in there, but that is it. Nancy, weather in Bermuda end of May should be beautiful, but if anybody else wants to weigh in on that, you can definitely probably have more knowledge about Bermuda. Please do. Diane, did I thank you for your super chat? Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Hmm? Grace, did I thank you for your super chat? Thank you, Grace. I appreciate it. Grace knows that I love that name and I love that word. It's on my favorite sherry things of 2018. Oh! Who asked me to put the Instapot in our cruise store? Ella, was that you? Was it Ella? Okay, so you guys, I kept getting this question. We just got an Instant Pot a few weeks ago to use in our home. I bought it at Costco, by the way. That, they're good, there's good deals at Costco. But someone said, please put it in your store. So what I decided to do was I put it in our store, but I created its own storefront called like Sherry's stuff in the house that you should never take on a cruise because I want to make it very clear that it's just like stuff in my house. It's real things that I use every day. So I put the Instant Pot in there. I put my KitchenAid mixer that is a gorgeous turquoise blue that Santa brought me last Christmas or the Christmas before. Do you know when Santa brought me that, hun? My KitchenAid mixer? Anyway, it's this gorgeous turquoise. And for those of you who don't know, this is totally irrelevant to cruising, but I collect Le Creuset products in Caribbean blue. It's the only thing I like to splurge on, but I put everything I own in Le Creuset in the store, and I thought you guys might think it's kind of fun. It's really not related to cruising, but I just think it's fun. So, Melody, an instant pot is a steam cooker. So it looks like a crock pot, but it cooks like a pressure cooker. So you literally, what we were doing last week during Vlogtober is I would put a, um, I would put a meal in the Instant Pot and it's ready, like meat cooked completely and steamed, the whole entire thing, like a stew, in 20 minutes. It's miraculous. Um, so yeah, it's like, it's basically a pressure cooker that looks like a crock pot. Mike and Cheryl, new grandparents on the block, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you for a wonderful Vlogtoberfest. It's not over yet. I'm just saying, we have a few more days, so I don't wanna get sad. All right, Melissa, your dog is named Mia Grace. That is so cute. Um, yes, Carol, when you book an excursion through Shipmate, you will get an email confirmation, most likely with your, um, with your instructions and everything on how to proceed on the day of the excursion. We're gonna make a video for you guys on booking an excursion through Shipmate because I am gonna book an excursion through Shipmate for Asia. So I'm excited to try that. I didn't know that, Karen. Instant Pot is made in Canada. M uh, Miwa Honda, yes, you can use the Apple Watch when swimming. However, you should put it in swim mode. Google the instructions on how to do that. And when you're done, you need to drain the water out of it. And to do that, you just press the home, the, no, not that one. No, 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 you swipe up. Okay, so what you do when you wanna put it in drain water mode is you swipe up like that. And then there's this little button somewhere Oh no, you guys, I'm terrible with this kind of stuff. There's a little button that's like a teardrop. You press the teardrop and then listen to the sound it makes. It's not gonna work. Every time I try to demonstrate this for you guys, it doesn't work. I'll try it again. Swipe up. Okay, here we go, listen. So what it does is it ejects any water out of it, but please use caution when submerging your Apple Watch in the water. 
I don't recommend taking it to the blue hole in Jamaica and jumping off 30 foot cliffs with it because my Apple Watch nearly passed away on the MSCC side when we went to the blue hole, but my husband resurrected it by putting it out in the hot sun, blow drying it, drying it, dehydrating it. I don't know how he saved it, but he did. Megan, can you please email me that recipe? Please, sherry at cruisetipstv.com. I would love that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Why is Ella laughing at you? She said, Mr. Cruisetipstv, I'm laughing out loud. That is funny. Ella, he is funny. He's a funny guy. Okay, let's see. Okay. Um, Julie, what shipmate excursion did you book? Would you mind sharing that with me? I would love that. I believe, Shelly, that Carnival just released their 2020 schedule. Okay. Looking for more. Yes, Karen, you have seen the Le Creuset mugs. I love those things. I wish they weren't so expensive. That's why I don't have many of them. Looking for more questions. <laughs> Carolyn's watching the World Series. Go Doyers. Go Doyers. Okay, Millie, I will do that for you. Um, yes, Brooke, the Instant Pot would 100% help a vegetarian because you can pressure cook an artichoke. Instead of in an hour, you can pressure cook an artichoke in 15 minutes. Highly recommend that you do it. Brittany, thank you so much for the super chat. You're a sweetheart. Thank you so much. Um, oh, Tammy, I don't take my passport ashore when swimming, so I take my photo ID like my driver's license only. Okay, I think we're doing pretty good with questions here, but I do believe that Luz said, what do you recommend for taking pictures underwater? You'd like to use your phone. You know what, go ahead and use your phone, Luz, and then just use one of these. Sorry, I'm off camera, I know. Luz, go on to our um, store and buy an MPOW. Uh, waterproof bag for your phone. This is just the neck wallet and then you can take pictures with it. We talk about this a lot. Um, I don't, I personally don't think they take the best photos, but it's better than not taking photos while you're underwater. So go for it. I know Amanda, don't remind me. I don't like this birthday. It's yucky. Not happy about it. But, oh, but do you guys, oh no, I'm not going to tell you what I'm dressing as at work. I can't tell you. I'm just going to surprise you on the air. Just gonna surprise you. You guys can try to guess what we're gonna do. Remember at work we always dress as a theme, but if you wanna try to make some guesses as to what our costumes will be, you can go ahead. I will listen. Okay, you guys, we are going to wrap up here soon. Thank you so much to all of you who have been here with us. I want to tell you what we're doing tomorrow, but I put my phone away, so I need to get the schedule. I think I know what we're doing. Tomorrow is Saturday, the 27th of October. And we will be live again at noon Pacific time. And our topic tomorrow is the top Mexican Riviera shore excursion. So we're gonna be talking about that. I'm also gonna generate a checklist for you guys, a list that you can access. So um, we probably won't put it in the description, but I'll make it available to you somehow. We'll figure it out. Maybe we'll put it on our website. I don't know what we're gonna do. Lynn, I'm glad you booked the blue hole. You'll be very glad. Jessica, yeah, usually there's two or three outlets on Princess. Newer ships have more. Holly, I'm not super familiar with St. Kitts, but I highly recommend the first time you go, you take an island tour, and the second time you go, take a day pass at a resort. That's what everybody tells me about St. Kitts. All right, everyone, we are going to go find some dinner. We're going to hunt it down. I don't know what we're going to do tonight, but I really want to thank everyone for being here. If you could give this video a thumbs up, it really does help us out a lot. The YouTube algorithm is completely difficult to comprehend, understand, predict, and control. But what we do know is that thumbs ups are super duper helpful. So thank you for all of those and thank you for all of your wonderful support. Can't wait to see y'all tomorrow, Saturday, noon Pacific time. Until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Cruiser of the week. <laughs>